Hello, Lazy Nation! Welcome to episode four of the Darth Easy Show. Welcome to another fun episode of the Darth Easy Show. So thanks for tuning in on however you're listening to this, through iTunes, through YouTube, through SoundCloud, through podcasts, anything. So welcome to episode four. This week I'm a little I'm a day late on the podcast. So we're going to continue with this awesome show. So for a little apologies this week. So I will not be having on my TV segment reviews of this week. I will not have reviews for Leftovers, American Gods, or Doctor Who. Better Call Saul was off this week, so no worries about there. Problems with that. The problems with the other three shows. I had I've been having problems with my computer, my laptop, how, how I view all my shows. So I will not be able to review those so i'll review those next week so stay tuned for those though for episode but but let's continue on with the darth easy show as they always say in showbiz the show must go on so this week in the in our first segment so i am decided to change a little something about the show i've decided to drop the passion because it is a lot of work i may i might pick it back up later on as the show develops, but for now, I am putting the, that on a hiatus. So we're so for now, I'm just going to do the movies, TV, video game, anime, and book segment of the show. So let's continue on with the show. So my first thing to talk about are movies, the showbiz. So this week on the Starfeed on the movies I saw, I saw Baywatch. And that movie was a big pile of dog shit. Let's just throw it out there. Sorry, Rock. Your movie is a huge bomb. It's your worst movie you've done probably since The Scorpion King. So let's just get into the nit and gritty about Baywatch. So Baywatch is just not a great movie. It's, you know, it's inspired from the TV show that was starring David Hasselhoff, Pamela Anderson, and I was never a, I never actually seen the show. I, I mean, you know what it's about. The most I ever remember the Baywatch show was from Sponge, the SpongeBob SquarePants the movie. When uh, I know it's a movie from my childhood, a show I watched all the time when I was a kid. And the base and the basics of it in the in the SpongeBob SquarePants movies, SpongeBob and Patrick are on the are on the beach, and and they're like, oh, "How are we gonna get back to Bikini Bob?" And they see uh, Devil Hasselhoff. He's like, "I'm Devil Hasselhoff. I'm here to help you." And they're like, "Yay!" So we're so that's what the that was what they're into. So. And so that's the most of Baywatch I ever got into. So this movie it stars The Rock, it has Zac Efron, and it has the one girl who was in True Detective. Who you know you I mean you know who I'm talking about. When I say True Detective, the first season of True Detective was really good, and she was really good in the show. But she has a really great sex scene with a topless scene with Woody Harrelson, and it's very very good. So if you're a creep, you I think you would probably really like that so Baywatch is I, the thing I don't like about ba- this Baywatch movie was this could have been like a 21 Jump Street kind of style movie it could have been like it made fun of itself which it did the funniest parts about the movie was how it it made fun of itself it broke the fourth wall at times and it's like man this would make a really great TV show and I, it was just some of that moments was really really funny but overall I just not care for this movie my, my The main thing about this movie was like, what was it? Was it a comedy? Was it an action? I know The, the Rock was, is the biggest action star right now, like next to him and Jason Safem. They're like, they're the only two really true action stars left in act movies today. But like I said, I just do not know what this movie was. Was it a comedy? Was it an action movie? And that's the main problem of the movie. And if you can't be one or the other, because I was thinking, hey, it's going to be a funny movie. It's probably going to be the funniest movie this summer. Well, I was wrong. I don't think there's going to be a funny movie this summer because Rough Nights is coming out. And I think that's just going to be garbage. So, overall, you can check out my review of Baywatch at my YouTube channel, at Darth Easy, on YouTube. I gave the movie a C-. minus. Probably one, It's I was looking at my movie rankings this uh, just the other day. And it's like one of the top three worst movies of 2017 I have seen so far. Now, I don't see the complete and other garbage movies, but it is pretty bad. So, for the classic movie review of the week, 
I saw a truly masterpiece of a movie. And, uh, and that movie was Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane was a movie I had heard was the greatest movie of all time. And I have to say, I understand why it is considered the greatest movie of all time. The way the movie uses flashbacks. You start the movie at the end of the story with the main character, uh, Kane. He dies and he, he must the word Rosebud. And when you hear Rosebud, and then you have these investigative journalists, they're trying to figure out, well, what does Rosebud mean? Does this kind of have some kind of element to his life? And so then it goes from the these report this reporter interviewing friends of his life. And this is what I like about the movie was it did like a point of view flashbacks. It took the character and then you had the, the his flashback through his eyes. And it was a very interesting story and very well used, uh, the way they used flashbacks. Orson Welles, the guy who was the main star, also directed the movie, did a marvelous job acting in this movie. The, 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 the girl, the woman who played the second wife, I thought she was really good in the movie as well. I can understand why this is the greatest movie of all time, and I very much really enjoyed Citizen Kane. So I want to talk a little spoilers at the moment, so if you haven't seen the movie, apologies. But this is a 70-year-old movie, so it's kind of hard to get not to get spoilers. But this is a movie people have not seen before. I think it's a movie that people should watch. I watch it mainly because I chose it as me and Rainy Cage's movie to watch for the Easy Cage show. So I, so that's why I chose this. Okay, that's what I'm talking about right now. And it's a movie which I have heard is if you consider yourself a film buff, you have to watch this and Kane. And I've seen Citizen Kane. It's a movie I will probably rewatch again. It's a movie I probably want to own in my Blu-ray collection. And I really liked the movie. And I gave it an A plus on my YouTube channel. You can check out my review there. The Rosebud thing. The thing about the so if you're don't really care about spoilers, the the significance of Rosebud mainly means Rosebud was the name of his sled. At the beginning of the movie, you see him as a kid. And when he was a kid, there was a, a sled that just had the word Rosebud on it. And when, and whenever his second wife leaves him, he just mutters the word Rosebud. Mainly meaning, he says, I want to do over. I want to go back to the very beginning. I want I want to start my life over again. I want to be happy. I just want to be a simple kid. I don't want to have all this money. And there are other themes in the story. One of the things I was reading about the movie was one of the themes at the time, because this movie came out back in 1941, which makes it one of the oldest movies I have ever seen. One of the main themes of the movie is he builds this manor to that's really he's isolating himself away from the world and it's a theme from, you know, the United States at the time was not involved in World War Two. They kind of had this had this policy of isolation, which is a policy made by George Washington. And the policy of it was to keep, make themselves completely separate from the world. And I really, really enjoy Citizen Kane. It's a very great movie. If you've not seen it, re I recommend checking it out. And now we're moving on to TV. So this is a shorter segment this week, but hey, at least we get it. So the first is to talk about The Flash Season 3, Episode 23, Finish Line. So this is the season finale of the third season of Flash. It was a very decent season. I have my review of Flash up right now, so check that out whenever you get the chance. So in this episode, we get a little stuff with, uh, we find out that Iris didn't actually die in the last episode. It was actually H.R. Wells. And I'm sad to see H.R. Wells go, but we'll probably get another Wells. It might just be Harry, because we, we see Harry Wells in season, at the end of the season. He was the Wells in season two of Flash. And I really liked the episode. I liked the battle with Flash and Savitar. And it was very, very cool. Basically what happens is Savitar is starting to fade away, because if Iris doesn't die, then Iris cannot exist. Mainly because Iris, because Ir, Ir, Iris dying is what turns Flash into making speed remnants to in order to defeat Savitar. So it was a very interesting way. In order to quote David Tennant's Doctor, you know, Tommy Wobby, Wibbly Wobbly time stuff. So very, very cool episode. And the episode ends with, you know, Savitar said, they're always like, oh, we all live happily ever ever. Not necessary because the Speed Force prison that, that Barry built to hold Savitar is starting to destroy Central City and to start to destroy the world. 
And in or the Speed Force prison has to have a occupant. So, and Barry's like, I have to go. This is my punishment for Flashpoint. This is my punishment for everything that had happened. And I was like, don't, no, don't leave. And then you see his mom, and she's like, it's time It's time to rest. It's time for you to go away. And Flash, Barry, they're like, the Central City needs a Flash, Barry. It's like, no, it already has a Flash. And then we have Wally West. Wally West kind of meant getting the mantle of Flash. Now, the question is for the next season of Flash, Will the next season of Flash be a season completely starring Wally West's Flash? And he'll probably don the colors of of the actual Flash, probably the costume. We'll actually see what happens. We'll actually, I don't know, who knows what the what CW will do. I think it will be interesting to see if they decide to do a, a Wally West Flash. Because I grew up with Wally West as the Flash. I watched him in the Justice League TV show. So I'll be interested to see if they decide to go down this route. But overall, I really like this season of Flash. It's not my favorite season. I like season one and season two a lot better than season three. And you know, it's not as bad as Arrow season three, but it's it's a very disappointing season. But overall, I really liked it. Check out my review on YouTube right now. And now, let's talk about Arrow season five, episode 23, Lee and you, and also talk about the season in all. So, in this film, we finally got the end of the flashbacks, uh, the arrow. So, let's talk about the flashbacks first, and then I'll get to the main storyline. In this episode, you see Oliver, he's uh, on Lee and Yu, and he's fighting Ivan Drago. Uh, that's not his name, but you know. And in the episode, he's got like 48, he's got like 12 hours to, to defeat Drago, to get rescue that we see at the beginning of the first episode of Arrow. And it was such a great way of ending the flashbacks, and it all made sense. It was great seeing the actress who played Moria Queen again. I really liked her, and I really liked her as an actress. So I really I really loved the way they ended the flashbacks. The flashbacks this season were really good. I'm curious what they'll do for a side thing next season. I guess they won't have flashbacks or anything, so who knows how long this show will actually go. But very cool in the flashbacks. Now let's get to the main storyline. So Prometheus has lured Oliver and the team all to Lee and you. And Oliver, at the end of the last episode, he recruited Monty Bennett. And it was a hell of a finale. See, it was great seeing Monty Bennett as Slade Wilson again. Very cool character. And, you know, one thing I loved about this season of Arrow was it went back to the basics of season one and season two. We we dropped the magic stuff. We dropped this huge League of Assassins. League of Shadows organization. We got right back to down the basics. But we we carry on elements that they that I actually really liked. Like you brought back in the drama of the League of Shadows between like Talia Al Ghul. She, she's teaming up with Prometheus because Oliver killed his father. Okay, that's a cool element. Then you also bring in the elements that I really liked about season four, about, you know, Laurel's death, bringing in Black Siren. So I really liked that. They brought in good stuff from this, from the season three and four, which are not considered great seasons by the fans. But I really, really enjoyed the season of Arrow. And I have to say, and in the finale, Prometheus has his son. He's like, kill me or I'll kill your son. And he has a dead man switch. And he has a dead, and if Oliver kills... Prometheus. Then the island goes boom, and Prometheus is like, "Do it!" And he's like, "Show me who you really are." And he saves his son. He's like, "He's like, I respect you." He's like, "You saved your son, but you can't save everyone else." Pulls a gun, blows his brains out, and then the island goes boom. So we'll. I'm curious what will happen. It ends in a kind of a cliffhanger. So we'll see what happens next season. So very great season. I liked Arrow this season better than Flash. Which is something I haven't said in a while. It's Flash it's, Arrow is back, so I'm glad this was a great season. You can check out my review. It will be up on the on the first. Um, record this on the first. It's actually like one o'clock a.m. right now. So I really enjoyed this season. So now we are talking about Survivor season thirty four episode twelve. No good deed goes unpunished. This was a very good finale. We had three. The first tribal council. We're going. I'm going to talk about the first tribal council, and then I'm just going to get to the finale because that's really all we're talking about. So the main thing to talk about in the finale was we had 
three idols and one advantage played. Sarah had the legacy advantage, which means she was safe for final six. Then you had two idols. Then you had three idols play. You had Ty play his immediate idol for himself, and he played his idol for Aubrey. Then Troy Sam played the idol. Brad Culpepper had won the uh, individual immunity, which means the only person who could literally go home was Sari. Sari did not get a vote, but she was the only person able to go home. So uh, that would have been interesting. So I always complain about like the like this season like the legacy advantage was just so useless it's like it can only be used for a specific time and you know it was very lucky it could be used at that time and all this mayhem could happen but very cool so Suri goes home I like Suri I thought she played a very good game but the cars just weren't in her favor this season so the other thing to talk about we had Brad Culpepper he won five immunities. Making him one, I think, like the fifth or sixth person to win five immunities. If you go go back, you have Kobe, Ozzy, uh, forget the guy who won a couple seasons ago on Worlds Apart. Uh, he won five immunities, was able to win his way, mainly because he was up against bad competition. So, uh, so, and basically, Sarah basically wipes the floor of him. She wins six to three, and I was glad to see Sarah win because she played such a great game she played a game where she was like in the complete middle she went back and forth back and forth back and forth and somehow win you know flippers usually don't win i really like the way they did final tribal council this season because it made it more like an open forum made it more of a discussion because it, let's just be honest they've been doing the the same thing in final tribal council for 32 seasons so i'm glad they did something different so I was glad to see Sarah win. Very great season. Very like Survivor this season. So now let's move on to video games. So this week I had played Kingdom Hearts. I just bought Kingdom Hearts for PS4. It's like the 1.5, 2.5. I'm actually playing Kingdom Hearts 2 right now. So I'll probably have Kingdom Hearts 2 beat by next week. So I'll talk about that next week on the dark, on episode 5 of the show. So Kingdom Hearts, the first game. I always... I remember when I was a kid, I it was like me and my friend uh, Chris. We were a we were just playing. We were, were we saw an advertised. I think it was around New Year's or something, and it was that classic uh, Kingdom Hearts. You know, of the it's like and you and I there's some weird there, there. and me. I was like, what the hell is that? It's got Disney characters. It's got like a weapon that's a key. I have no idea what the hell this is, and I want to play it. And I never played any of the Final Fantasy games, and I but I was a big Disney fan. I love Disney, still do to this day. And I have to say, this was a very very great game. I had replayed it before, but I don't ever actually remember beating Kingdom Hearts. I've beaten Kingdom Hearts two a lot and a lot, and I absolutely love the first Kingdom Hearts game. It's so much fun to play. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a lot more fun to play. I play Kingdom Hearts for the gameplay. The story is kind of hit and miss, but it's one thing I loved about Kingdom Hearts is you go to all these different kind of worlds, and the, it's a very, very cool version of Kingdom Hearts that I really like. You go to worlds of Tarzan, you go to Peter Pan, you go to Aladdin, you go, and then you call in summonings with, like, Simba, Mushu. You go to those worlds of Kingdom Hearts, too. I'll talk about that next week. But overall, I very, very much love playing Kingdom Hearts, too. Kingdom Hearts. I have a review. It'll probably be out Friday at, as I'll, which will probably be out. So, get so tune in for that. So very fun. So on anime this week, we're actually skipping this week's anime segment mainly because once again, as I said at the beginning of the show, my computer is just was not working, and I could not watch my anime of the week. So I cannot watch Attack on Titan. I'll talk about that next week. I'll talk about both episodes that I missed. So, to wrap up the show, we got the book segment. I'm still reading Thrawn. I'm actually only 100 pages into it. I'll be honest with you, the only time I really read is when I take a dump. But if I get really into a book, I'll read a little more. And I have read a lot more of Thrawn. And right now, I have 100 pages left. I'm actually going to try to finish that out this week. Try to get a YouTube review. But I'll talk more about Thrawn next week. But one thing that I've read is that Price has just become a governor. Thrawn is now Commodore, and it is getting very, very good. I really like Thrawn. Very good book. So to wrap up the show, instead of just ending it right here, I want to talk about 
upcoming movies that are coming out next week for the Darth Easy. Sh- um, so for my classic movie review, let's just get the classic movie review out of the way. I want to be talking about Spider Man Three, and I haven't seen Spider Man Three in who knows four or five years probably. And there's a probably a good reason why because Spider Man Three sucks. It's not a good movie, so I'll be talking about that next week. Other things to talk about, I'll be re- I'll be talking to- next week on my TV segment show. That with leftovers, of the season finale comes out Sunday, so I'll be talking about leftover season one finale next week. So that's very sad, but I'm I'm very curious how the show is going to end. And the other thing to talk about for the Darth Easy show is uh, we're also. House of Cards just dropped online Tuesday, and I've, I'm have i about seven episodes into House of Cards. Very good show. I'll have that finished next week. Should have a review either Saturday or Monday or Tuesday. So, very much looking forward to finishing that show. And, you know, one day, it's, I'll, I'll say this little quick thing about it. It's crazy how much they, they create this show. They do it, like, early in the year, and it's so crazy how much stuff they actually get right. That's all I'll say. And so the upcoming movies to talk about. So this week I have I'm gonna I'm gonna either gonna go I'm gonna either do a double feature of Pirates of the Caribbean and Wonder Woman, or I'm just gonna see Wonder Woman. I'm not gonna promise I'm gonna see Pirates of the Caribbean because I've not heard great things about it. I have not really looked forward to any of the Pirates movies since I like the first one. That's about it. So I may do a double feature of Pirates and Wonder Woman. I haven't decided yet. If I do, then yeah. But overall, I'm really looking forward. But let's talk about Wonder Woman. This is a movie which all the DCEU is hope hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this is the one of the best superhero movies ever. And it's not just that it's a DC movie. We're all. I always hope DC does good because I love DC. I love Batman. I love Superman. I love The Flash. I'm a DC guy. I watch Batman the anime series. I like the Justice League cartoon show. I absolutely love DC. And on this, and this Wonder Woman movie is. It's not just because it's a DC movie. It's because it's a woman superhero movie. There has not been. A woman superhero movie that's been successful. What are you going to talk about? Catwoman? Pfft, that movie's terrible. We're not going to talk about that. And a woman has not led in a superhero movie. And when I and right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 96%. And I am so happy for that. I am so looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman. I'm probably going to, hear, going to see it. I'm probably going to see it Tuesday. I had an early screener for it Tuesday, but the screeners people I overbooked it so I didn't get to go into it so freaking freaking screeners and ah, man pisses me off but overall guys that really concludes the Darth Easy show episode 4 so make sure guys tweet at me at Darth Easy 2 that's a capital D capital E and you can tweet at me anytime tweet me questions uh, one day I will try to make this live because basically this is a live recording of me talking about the show so overall, I really, I really love the Darfies. I love doing this. This is the fourth time I've done it. I'm almost, it's, I've basically been doing it all month. So thank you for the support. I've been getting some pretty decent views. I'm hoping to, so make sure you spread this to your friends. Spread it on your Facebook account. Spread it on Twitter. And make sure you get that, the five, give that, give that some ratings on iTunes. So it helps the podcast grow. It makes me not feel discouraged. It makes me want to keep doing the show. So guys, until next week, just, Keep on, keep on watching your movies. Keep on watching your TV. Playing some games. Watch some anime and read a book. And until next time, all too easy. And see you next week. Bye.